Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. The real form of the guru or the essence of guru is Shab. Only those people who are extremely fortunate get the opportunity to follow the practice of Shab. When they enjoy it thoroughly, then lust, anger, greed, attachment, and pride are destroyed. Please continue watching to find out more. To see Kivemo means how are you in Punjabi. My name is Sharia. The blessed people of India are touched that you choose the compassionate way of life. The animals love and appreciate you for all the lives you save. Baba Sawan Singhji, also known as Haza Maharaj, or the Great Master, was a devoted practitioner and enlightened master. From a young age, he became acquainted through his father with holy men of his time. Throughout his young adulthood, he studied spiritual scriptures written in Punjabi, Hindi, Urdu, English, and Persian. While still fulfilling his worldly duties, Baba Sawan Singh Ji's longing for God was his true motivation in life. Ultimately, he was led to the enlightened master Baba Jamal Singh. Following Baba Jamal Singh's passing, Baba Sawan Singh Ji became the second Sadguru of the organization Radha Swami Sasambehas, founded in Northern India. Followers of his teachings came from all religions and also from many countries. It was said that he initiated some 150,000 people, the largest number in history at that time, into the spiritual practice of inner heavenly light and sound. Thus, he spread the light of God realization into all corners of the world. Today, we are honored to share with you excerpts from Baba Sawan Singh Ji's Letters from Spiritual Gems, a collection of letters written to practitioners living mainly in Europe and the United States. Addressing a range of spiritual matters, this correspondence offers simple clarity and a certainty that reflects the Master's deep wisdom. The greatness of this spiritual Master resonates through His uplifting and loving words. We are honored to share these spiritual treasures. It is only when you go up, see what happens inside and how things are managed that you really understand these things. But there are some karmas which cannot be wiped off because if there is too much interference, the deed still stands. Outward love also is not bad, but the real love and devotion can be manifested only when you rise above the nine doors of the body. Eating sweet things is different from just talking about them, but even talk of sweet things is also interesting. As long as there is any worldly attachment, it is no use. If you want love and grace, then use all your energy in going up. Such people are not non-existence, but they are few. The soul goes in and when the flame of love bursts forth within, it goes up immediately and there is only one way. The inner design is not the result of any human effort, it is the design of God. But the formal religions do not even suspect its existence. Even if they conquered the whole world, would it go with them? Of course not. That true name resounds in the sweetest strains in the hearts of all of us. It cannot be written or spoken or read. It is neither Gurmukhi, nor Arabic, nor Persian, nor any other language. It cannot be seen with these eyes, nor heard with these ears. For these eyes are mortal, and in order to function properly, they depend upon some sort of light, such as sun, moon, or electricity. Guru Nanak Sahib says, Those eyes are different with which you can see the Lord, your mother and father. 
You speak without the tongue, and thus you die in life. And there is no language. If there is no language, then there is no room for any Vedas, Shastras, or any other scriptures. That is to say, when one dies in life, then he contacts the true Nam. This means when one consciously leaves this house of nine doors and contacts Gurbani or Shab, that is the true Nam and it is not the monopoly of any religion. The real form of the Guru or the essence of Guru is Shab. Only those people who are extremely fortunate get the opportunities to follow the practice of Shab. When they enjoy it thoroughly, then lust, anger, greed, attachment, and pride are destroyed. When you control your mind and senses, you enjoy Shab all the more. Then you have attained salvation in this very life. Not until you love the Shab will there be an end to your coming and going. Now, this is a universal law and is for everyone without exception. The trouble is that people do not know what Sagar Seva is. They think spending wealth or spending money in some good cause is Seva. Those who have been able to go in and enjoy the shop are true Satsangis and they have made full use of their lives. That is real Sagar Seva. And this is not the exclusive teaching of Guru Nanak Sahib, but the Mohammedan saints also say the same thing. Dadu, Pautu, and in fact all those Mahatmas who have reached Saj Khan say the same thing. Every jiva, according to his karmas, is given another birth in some other place. The body into which he has to be put is ready. The body into which he has to be born and the interval between death and rebirth both depend upon his karmas. The Master showered His grace when He initiated you. Now your duty is to practice concentration and go up. Then love will come automatically. A loving disciple will not be left in the lurch. For example, if a child gets dirty, the mother washes and bathes it and then again takes it into her lap. In the same way a Sadguru, after cleansing the disciple of the effects of his bad karmas and making him pure, takes him up. Whatever we do in this world, we do according to the dictates of the mind. Whether it is eating, drinking, seeing friends, entering into new relationships, all these things are of the mind. In fact, the world does not worship God but worships the mind because it obeys the dictates of the mind only. Many people practice Simran but all credit and all glory to him who practices Simran or continuous remembrance of God without any desire. If one has not gone up and opened the door, then he is no better than an animal. When we are attending to our daily duties, our mind is usually not occupied with them but is wandering. Saints say, hold the reins of the mind tight in your hand throughout the day. Then when you sit in bhajan or a devotional song, concentration will be quick and easy. It is easier to concentrate the mind by simran or continuous remembrance of God than by any other practice. Saints do not waste even a single minute but keep their attention fixed either in Simran or in Deyan or meditation or in Dun or Tun. Simran collects and concentrates the mind and the soul. Deyan helps to keep it at one place and Dun or Shab pulls it up. Do not let the mind remain idle. When we go up into higher regions, the mind stays back, but when we return, it joins us again on the way back to the body. When you begin to enjoy Simran, the mind will not go out again? That can be answered by the following illustration. Moses, thinking that he was a great devotee and lover of God, requested God to bring him in contact with or point out to him a greater and a better lover of God than himself and God pointed to a bird upon a tree not far from the place. When Moses approached the bird and asked if there was anything that he wanted or that he could do for it, 
The bird replied that it was perfectly satisfied and happy, except for one thing. Moses asked what that was. The bird said that it wished it did not have to leave its perch to go for water. Moses was astonished at this and pointed out that the bird was perched on a tree immediately above the water and all it had to do was to fly down a few feet to take a drink. The bird replied, That is true, but I am always thinking of God and the time spent in flying down and taking a drink takes me away from the contemplation of my love or God for a few minutes. That is my only regret. Upon hearing this, Moses felt ashamed and realized that this bird loved God more than he did. Today, we are honored to share with you excerpts from Baba Sawan Singh Ji's Letters from Spiritual Gems, a collection of letters written to practitioners living mainly in Europe and the United States. Addressing a range of spiritual matters, this correspondence offers simple clarity and a certainty that reflects the Master's deep wisdom. The greatness of this spiritual Master resonates through His uplifting and loving words. We are honored to share these spiritual treasures. By Simran alone, the soul leaves the body and goes up. When concentration is complete, one does not feel the need to change positions or to attend to the calls of nature for hours, eight or ten. Mahatmas who employ various other techniques reach only up to the first stage. Simran, or continuous remembrance of God, is the best. I speak from my own experience. I did not give dhyan or meditation or dun or tune to quite a number of Mohammedan disciples, but only taught them the technique of Simran or continuous remembrance of God, and they concentrated their mind and soul and went up. When the Simran is complete, one hears the inner heavenly sound within. If you can vacate or withdraw the current from, even half the body, you will see inner heavenly light inside. I received hundreds of letters to this effect. My work is practical. In order to see how they behaved and how they felt, I initiated them into Simran only, but they went up and saw things for themselves. This meets the objection made by several people, namely that they see only what they have been told. Even after going in, you are not allowed to meditate on the sun, the moon, and the stars. These are material inside as well as outside. Till one reaches the Ashdal Kamal, or eight-petaled lotus, he is not fit for true dhyan, that is contemplation of the master's form. In the primary stages, chitta or mind stuff serves as nirat or sight. Real nirat is developed higher up. The Anahab Shap or unstruck music goes as far as the region of matter and mind. After crossing Pap Ram Dasa or True Shap is heard. Of the three phases of spiritual practice, the first is Simran. With the help of Simran, we have to vacate the nine doors of the body. After crossing the sun and the moon, we need something on which to fix our attention. You can stay there only with the help of Dian. After that, you require inner heavenly sound or shab for going up. The true shab begins from Turiya Pad or fourth state. The power that has created the entire universe is shab. Jyoti or divine light is one thing, and shab is another thing. The jyoti will automatically come whether you practice pranayam or shab yog. In the waking state, the headquarters of the soul is behind the two eyes. If you happen to be in the middle of a hill and you want to go up, why need you go down at all? You can go up from where the concentration of the soul begins. When you cross the new chakra or blue center, you will see Jyoti. It has 1,000 lights. At the stage where the Jyoti is, there are 10 sounds. The soul has two faculties, the faculty to see and the faculty to hear. 
Shap is of two kinds, Vanatmak and Duniatmak. Whatever can be written, read or uttered or pronounced is Vanatmak. First of all, there is the sound which is made by the tongue and then that which is muttered in the throat. The third is that which is spoken in the heart. The fourth is made in the nabi or navel center by the yogis with the help of pranas or life force. These sounds can help you only in concentration but no further. We have to withdraw the soul out of the nine doors, cross the sun and the moon and go beyond that. The jyoti or the light exists on account of shab. Where there is no shab, there is no jyoti or light. This light is mixed with ahanka or egotism. Rather, the mind accompanies the soul up to the top of Brahm. You would realize or meet your guru after you have crossed the sun and the moon. But he can take you up only as far as he goes himself. We do not need the pranas. We only take the mind and soul up. Atma or soul becomes Pamatma or Supreme Soul only in Satlok or the fifth spiritual region. So far, you go with the help of light. Beyond that, you go with the help of Shab. And in Mahasan, the region of intense darkness, there is no Shab even. It is all dark. It is the region of darkness. You know that there is a jyoti of Tatwas or essences. This jyoti, then of which you speak, springs from Tatwas. Well, I'm glad that a man living in a householder's life has achieved so much. When the dissolution comes, this creation up to Brahm is destroyed. In the case of the grand dissolution, it reaches up to Sohang, but not to Satlok. At the most, the Jyoti will take you up to the top of Brahm, thence onward you travel up by means of Shab. The lights which you see when you go up are the lights of the Tatwas. The Jyoti light which springs from Shab will be further up. Tatwas have their own light, but the real Jyoti you will meet further on. The trouble is that you are now in the big jail of 84 lakh cells. You cannot be happy even in human life. The pleasures of the senses are only nominal and short-lived. Besides, Everyone has his problems and sorrows. One's daughter is a widow. Another son has left a widow. Yet another is groaning under a load of debt and all types of adversity. The point is that we are a drop of that great ocean and we have to go back and merge in it. For innumerable eons, we have been rotting in this jail. Now, just as we attend to other affairs of the world, let us devote a couple of hours every day to this practice also. What is the harm then? Besides, this is a wealth which you take with you and not leave behind. When you pierce the veil and go up, the pleasures of this world appear very low and coarse compared to the bliss you enjoy there. In fact, it is like a public latrine when compared to the inner bliss. This is a thing which cannot be bought, nor can it be had for the asking. Work hard, vacate the body, or withdraw the consciousness and go up, and you will get it. It is your inheritance and has been kept for you. This joy is greater than all worldly pleasures. Now, please think, have you ever attended to your own work? Yes, one does hear voices inside. These voices come from two sources. One from the rare man, merciful or God, and the other from the negative power. You should not accept them at once, but first say, Please come before me. Who are you? Brilliant viewers, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today on Words of Wisdom. Coming up next is the Millennium Eve with Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, Part 5 of 9, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to more enlightening programs here on Supreme Master Television. May the inner Sakuru be your spiritual companion and guide every moment of your life. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.